Welcome back guys to a new video of the My Home Lab series and today we're going to take a look at this uh, sweet little uh, thing here. So this is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B actually. So yeah, so this is a little uh, computer essentially running an ARM processor, so not full uh, Intel x86 or full AMD processor or whatever, but just an ARM processor similar to what's in your uh, phone, for example. And yeah, still this thing has a decent amount of performance for that. And yeah, so here you can see this thing has a fast Ethernet, so only 100 Mbit, but still fast enough for my application and a couple of USB ports. Then there is a, well, a USB micro B for uh, power, so this only needs a USB cord to get powered essentially and then there's also an HDMI port and yeah some audio and that's pretty much it from the normal ports then here I think this thing is uh, yeah for a camera here you could put a screen on that connector and then we also have some GPIO pins up there which are used to yeah just output or input uh, data over uh, yeah such a little pin all right, uh, back here is also like the micro SD card, which is used for storage. We can already pull that one out because we will uh, need to flash that again. Okay, so what do I want to do with that or why did I originally buy it? Uh, I originally, I bought it for, I don't know, like just playing around with it. And then at some point I use it as a print server for uh, an old printer we had that didn't have any uh, network capabilities. So that was a nice little project there. Um, but since we then bought like a new printer with Wi-Fi built in, uh, this thing was really not used for anything and just sitting around. So I was just searching all the time for like a new project, what I could do with it. And I already had one uh, kind of planned out. So I wanted to do like a, a monitoring server uh, out of this thing. But then I never really followed through with that. I kind of looked at the software side of things a little bit and then I, I don't know, I just didn't really follow this uh, a lot. and. Um, now we're actually going to build something out of this today. Um, no, not a monitoring server, but a VPN server actually, which I think is even cooler than a monitoring server and even has some more use for me at least. Um, yeah, so first we're going to take a quick look at what a VPN even is. And after that, we are going to go a little bit over how I uh, try and set this up. I haven't tried it myself yet, so we will see if this actually works or not. And on that note, let's just talk quickly here about how a VPN actually work and what it is used for. So right here you can see now a typical setup I would say. So in the middle you have the cloud or the, well, internet. Uh, then to the left of it there's your home router with its public IP address. And then to the left of the home router is the uh, home network consisting out uh, of a PC, uh, which should be my PC right now. Uh, the NAS with a couple of virtual machines running on top of it and the Raspberry Pi. So all of these only have private IP addresses, so they are not so, e not so easy to reach from the internet, but that's what we're going to go over here now in a second. Um, on the right side, you can right side you could just see a, a random server and my uh, phone. Uh, my phone when I'm on the road, so over LTE, so I'm actually not connected to the home network. Okay. Now, as you can see right here, if we are trying to just access the internet, then that just works, right? Just like uh, I'm building up the communication from within the home network, and then uh, the server can answer through that uh, communication channel that gets built. So that works without an issue. But if I, from my phone now, want to connect to a device within the home network, then that won't work due to two uh, main issues here. Um, yeah, well, number one being, or the major one being that, well, this entire network only has one public IP address. So, yeah, one IP address, but multiple devices. So the router is doing a technology called NAT, or Network Address Translation. So basically what that does is it allows multiple devices to communicate via one IP address, um, with the drawback of the entire thing being that, uh, well, now that not every device has its own IP address anymore, we can't uh, build a communication channel up from the outside. So 
uh, that's why with a net router in place which is pretty much default and normal for everybody to have um, that means that then only the devices itself can build up the communication <clears throat> so if you want to run now a server um, like I do then uh, and you want to connect to it from the internet uh, then this is uh, not so easy then you have to do some port forwarding on the router to just say hey now every traffic that comes to the router on that specific port gets then uh, yeah well forwarded to that specific device on that specific port um, exactly so through port forwarding you can make this work um, but that's just uh, not the most secure thing to open up uh, all your stuff to the internet via port forwarding for example stuff like RDP to connect to my VMs or the NAS itself stuff like that you wouldn't open up to the internet usually um, yeah so exactly this problem can be solved by a VPN that's uh, building as you can see here a neat little encrypted tunnel that then goes uh, uh, through the entire thing to the Raspberry Pi so that's actually uh, that actually needs some port forwarding in place to function correctly but it's only like that one port to the Raspberry Pi and well you have to authenticate then with the Raspberry Pi and VPN it's like a single uh, point of entry instead of like multiple so yeah that's already a lot more secure so there's also a second problem here and that is that uh, usually with a uh, normal home private internet connections uh, you don't get a static IP address what that means is that this public IP address here changes usually every day every week every time the router reboots whatever it depends on uh, your ISP obviously um, but yeah when that uh, public IP address changes then you obviously cannot connect to anything anymore because you need to connect to the IP address usually um, but with then changes that's bad so that's why I'm using uh, also now a DNS service um, called noip.com where you get essentially a host name assigned to so DNS address just like google.com for example and through that DNS address you can always reach your home network so you have to install a client on one of your devices that then periodically uh, will check uh, if the public IP address changed and if that changed then it will report it back self to the dynamic DNS uh, service and then they will just update that entry so uh, yeah a DNS name is basically just like a shortcut essentially to an IP address you could say and then they're just changing that out once your IP address changes so that way you can always reach your home network through that DNS name okay so maybe you uh, know VPNs also from uh, all these VPN apps and ads on YouTube uh, like NordVPN or TunnelBear in the past uh, well or now PIA or whatever um, there are just tons of these services so what's up with that now um, well they actually use the same technology but for a different purpose uh, so I use a VPN now to connect to my own home network but you can also use a VPN to connect to another network, specifically a network that is in another country. As you can see here, you are in country A and you want to go to country B. Uh, well, but you want to go to country C. I don't know, for example, you want to watch some stuff on Netflix that's not available in your country or, well, geoblocking and geofencing are definitely a thing. Maybe you want to do a trip to China and there you cannot access any Google services and stuff like that, for example. So then you can use a VPN essentially to connect to a network but a network is also not a country or place um, yeah again there's an encrypted tunnel just like with VPNs normally like I mean it's just default VPN stuff right that's like the whole thing behind a VPN that encrypted tunnel and then you can essentially go into another country or what it's also useful for um, well because it's actually an encrypted tunnel <laughs> you can uh, work past some bad security for example if you're like in an open public wi-fi network where all the traffic is not encrypted so people could theoretically read all your data that you're sending i mean yeah sure these days with https most of your traffic is encrypted anyways but just to be safe 
you can just add another layer of encryption there and then go to your home network or to some VPN service and get some extra security there. Um, and that's already it on what a VPN is. So now let's just continue with setting everything up. So now that we hopefully understood how this all works, we just have to first get an actual operating system onto the Raspberry Pi. Um, there actually is already an OS on this uh, SD card, which doesn't want to focus, but who cares? Um, but we are going to use a different one. So we are just going to pop uh, the micro SD card in here real quick, just like that. And then it should already pop up on the PC. So as you can now see, Windows already detected the uh, SD card here, but it uh, doesn't really like what's happening here because it cannot read the uh, file system that's on there right now. So what we're going to do here real quick is we're going to just format the bloody thing. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter what we do out of this. We can just give it also a name and then we can, yeah, we'll erase everything. Thanks for that info. And yeah, now we have again a blank SD card. All right, so now what we are going to do, we are going to actually download the uh, the Raspberry Pi OS that we are going to need. So for that, we're just going to Google for Raspberry Pi here real quick. Go on to raspberrypi.org and up here should be downloads exactly. And then we are going to download Raspbian. Uh, let's see, so we can also yeah, use the new noobs installer, which then gives you the option to install a bunch of software. But I don't want to hook this thing up to monitor or anything. I just hopefully can directly interact with it via SSH, which we're going to take a look at very soon. So we're just going to download Raspbian here uh, with desktop and recommended software. So that's when you want to use it uh, like a, a desktop computer. Um, I am actually going to take this one, I think, because that may make things like troubleshooting a little bit easier. And there we should have like also all the software we'll need. Um, yeah, realistically, we don't really need that, but better than nothing, I guess. All right, now this hopefully goes a little bit faster than it says it will take. And yeah, now we're just going to download the bloody thing and then we're going to take a look at it once it's done. Alright, so now we have Raspbian downloaded here, so we can uh, close that here real quick. Luckily, it didn't take like almost an hour. Uh, yeah, that's not even my internet connection, that's just like the download server being so goddamn slow. So now we can just unzip this here real quick, and then we're going to take uh, Rufus here, a handy little program to then burn the image essentially onto the SD card, so we can then put that into the Pi and then boot from that. At least that's the plan. 
All right, so in here we now have the image file. So now over here we already have uh, the SD card selected and then we're just going to select the uh, the file here real quick. Uh, go in here and uh, then this doesn't find a thing. Um, uh, we might have to do something else here actually. Nope, that this was, uh, yeah, I think we have to do that uh, thing there. Okay, no, that actually looks good. Yeah, all right, and then it already reads in like all the other stuff it needs. We don't need to check if there's anything that's not working correctly, so we can just uh, say start, and yeah, we will lose all the data, and yeah, uh, blah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know. It's my fault when something goes wrong and goes missing. Uh, oh, right, that doesn't sound too good. Um, what is your problem? I think I already had that the last time I tried it to, uh, to put something on there. So maybe there's something wrong actually with the SD card. Uh, I'm just trying to like reinsert it real quick. All right, let's just try again here real quick. And then this. Um, but now this actually does look a little bit better. Now let's try and write the thing directly. And hope this works now. All right, so now we are done here, which means that we can now safely eject this thing. And now we can put this thing back into the pie. So, all right, here we now go. Uh, we can pull this thing out of here, get this thing out of the way. Now we have here the pie. I already put this back into its uh, protective casing. Uh, go in there, you damn bastard. Okay, so now we also have that figured out. And now we only have to power this thing on and we can see whether or not we can actually remote into this thing using SSH right out of the box. So, all right, it seems like everything has worked. The thing connected to my router here. Um, we can see this already also got an IP address. So it's now important to check this box down here, which essentially says that this thing will always get the same IP address if possible, which is uh, probably helpful, I guess. Um, yeah, we can also check if we can just uh, ping the bloody thing. So we can get a CMD here and this real quick but yeah this all looks pretty fine so now we can try and log into this thing via putty here and the thing doesn't want to do that that is definitely not so good um, so we probably have to plug this thing into some peripherals first and then uh... so now we uh, got onto the desktop of the thing um, yeah, I obviously cannot record that. So uh, yeah, that's why this is all now a little bit, a little bit janky. Okay, so we can, yeah, next, whatever. We are definitely not in the United Kingdom. We are living in, oh, where are we living? We are living in Germany, actually. Uh, that's Greenland, that is Germany. Okay, that all that looks quite nice. Uh, so now we've got to, got to wait a little bit here until this thing does its job. Okay, I mean, it's also good that we can maybe configure some stuff here. Uh, yeah, change password, okay. All right, let's do that. All right, now we can click next and then, yeah, we can skip that because we are connected via Ethernet. Actually also shows that up there. Oh uh, yeah, all right. Let's do a little bit of software updates then. Uh, yeah, so maybe you can see the little flash up there. So I am running this via five volt power off uh, a computer uh, essentially with uh, DD power for the thing. 
um, the power supply that comes with the Pi is actually a 5.1 volt power supply, but I never had any issues running this with uh, only 5 volts, so um, yeah, but we'll see if this is if it, but we'll see if this is like an issue or whatever, but I don't think it will be, it just kind of shows a little flash up there a little bit sometimes. Oh no, I think I uh, also set the language to German, which was probably a bad thing to do. Now it uh, tries to download all the languages. Damn! Alright, now we are hopefully almost done with that. Uh, comparing versions. Okay, then compare some versions if you really want to. I don't care. Uh, downloading updates, but that seems to be uh, rather quickly as well. Alright, now we download all the updates, hopefully. Uh, I think now it might want to install them as well, but now it seems to uh, do something at least. Hey, seems like this thing didn't freeze actually, which is great. Uh, but now it's installing the updates as well, which kind of makes sense. Because only downloading them, uh, yeah, well, doesn't uh, seem too good of an idea. Um, Alright, so maybe we can already do some settings here while this is still updating. Uh, at least kind of looks like it. Um, yeah, let's go into preferences here. And we are going to go into the Raspberry Pi configuration. Here we can now, yeah, do some things. So the hostname Raspberry Pi, we can just Keep that we want to boot to the command line interface so it doesn't load the desktop usually. Auto login login is user pi. We can also just do uh, or not do that. Uh, network get boot, wait for network. Yeah, we can uh, do not complete boot until network connection is established. Yeah, let's just do that. Um, we can actually keep the rest as is interface. So now that is the interesting one. Uh, we want to enable SSH uh, so we can remote into the bloody thing. Performance. Oh, uh, we cannot overclock it, damn it. And uh, localization. Um, okay, uh, local. Uh, yeah, that doesn't enjoy itself, that's for sure. Um, yeah. Oh. Language, so we want not German as language, we want uh, English should be down here somewhere. English, yep. Country, yeah, but I want a country uh, still uh, kind of German, you know. Um, but then let's just uh, keep that as is with UTF 8. I hope the time zone still stays uh, correct. But I mean, we can configure that uh, separately anyway, so that shouldn't matter. All right, now that's uh, configured as well. We can time zone. I think time zone was still, yep, that's the correct one. Keyboard, I mean, that doesn't really matter, but yeah, German, that's it's fine. Wi-Fi country, yeah, German, that's also correct. Okay, so now we only have to wait on uh, the installing software updates thing. Oh, and we need a reboot for that, so... Uh, I thought that Linux and on Windows, I thought you can do stuff without reboot, but hey, I might be wrong. But let's just reboot later, and then we can do that at some other point. Oh, I know my mouse isn't working as well, but hey, who cares, really? Oh, there she goes. So now we really just gotta wait on the installing updates part. All right, so now everything seems to be up to date. Um, yeah, so let's just do a quick reboot here. Oh yeah, and then we can now hopefully log in through SSH. So now we are actually connected to the, the thing via SSH. We can also get like completely full screen here, okay. So now we can try and log in here with, uh, I guess, the user Pi and the password that I just set. And that seems to work pretty well, actually. Um, now let's just uh, 
See, there shouldn't be any more updates available now. Mm. Yeah, now it does at least something. Let's see if this thing finds anything, but I don't think so because we well we just updated uh, via the GUI and then upgrade. Let's see, is there something? Nope, okay, great. So now we can um, start getting the no IP client for that we are going to go into the usual local and SRC thing. Let's see if there's anything here, nope. Uh, nope, okay. So now um, I'm just going to copy the command. You are going to find all of the commands hopefully in the video description down below. So this will just download the no IP Linux client. All right, that actually uh, worked. There we have this thing. So now we can, uh, because that is essentially like a target G, G, Z file or whatever. Uh, so basically an archive, we have to uh, basically unzip that, so for that we just use sudo tar xf and then the name of the file and now we should have uh, a nice folder here, exactly, so now we can actually go also into that folder, can also take a look inside and there just is a little bit of stuff in there, so now we are going to start the install process with sudo make install, let's see uh, yeah, some, some warnings here. Please enter the login email string for noip.com. All right, paste in the email address. And the uh, password here as well. I am going to blur everything out because, well, uh, so you can't uh, see that and I don't get... Yeah, if you want to send me an email, then you have an email address, which is in the video description down below, I think. Community at the txt.club. Uh, do you wish to run something at successful update? Uh, I don't want to run anything there. Okay. So now we have the no IP client configured. So this is essentially just, as I explained earlier, it just uh, checks whether or not my IP address has changed, the public IP address has changed. Uh, and if that has changed, then it will report itself back to the server from no IP and then everything will be updated. Okay, um, now we can actually start the client. So we do, again, pretty much the same thing, uh, just without the dash C at the end. Okay, now I am going to also log into the website of uh, noip.com. So, uh, noip.com, yeah log in and log in again. Uh, okay, so now we are here on the dashboard. And username and security question to complete your account configuration. Uh, uh, okay, so now we did that one host without recent dynamic updates, one active host name. Um, yeah. Let's just see here. what is my IP address. Yeah, so I am blurring this all out, um, but it seems like this is actually working. So this actually shows my correct IP address here. Okay. Um, so now we have to start the client, obviously, every time the Raspberry Pi also restarts. So for that we can uh, create a startup script. Okay, so we can do sudo and then uh, touch edz in it dot add the dot d uh, and then no ip2 and 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 uh, sudo change mod and then plus six. So this is also executable. 
Okay. So now we can also uh, take a look into this file we just created. Um, yeah, EDC in a D and no IP. Okay, so this is now empty. It's unwritable. Why are you unwritable? Uh, yeah, let's also uh, sudo that and then we should be able to write. Yep, we can. Let's see, now we have to write some uh, stuff into there. Um, okay, can we just... How that actually... Oops. Um, yes, that actually worked. Now we do have our script in here, which I uh, got also from the website. It's also linked in the description down below. Um, demon, yeah, that seems a uh, fine name. I think should also be good. Let's see, do we have to actually do anything here? I don't think so, actually. Um, yeah, so let's just write this out and exit here. Okay. Okay, so now we gotta do a sudo update rc.d. Um, no IP2 defaults. Okay. Now that seems to be everything for the uh, setup for no IP. So now we just gotta do the installation of uh, the actual OpenVPN client. Um, for that, I'm going to just use the uh, this command right here, curl dash l and https uh, install dot pi vpn dot io and then r bash. Okay. No, this might take a little while. Mm, yeah, here we are installing packages. Okay. Now that looks a little bit fancier than all the uh, all the rest we did already. So, retrieving file seven of seven. Okay, we are at fifteen percent now. Okay, this installer will transform Raspberry Pi into an open VPN server. That sounds great. The Pi VPN is a server, so it needs a static IP address to function properly. Yeah, yeah, fine. In the next section, you can choose to use your current network settings uh, or yeah, blah, blah. Do you want to use? Yeah, I want to use my current uh, as a static address. I mean, we already uh, made it static through the uh, browser uh, thing, uh, through the router. Okay, uh, yeah. Oops, uh, no, cancel. Oops. Damn, that was... Uh, too much cancel. Um, yeah, yes, let's use that. It is possible your router could still try to assign this IP to a device, which would cause a conflict, but in most cases the router is smart enough to not do that. If you are worried, either manually set the address or modify the DHCP reservation pool so it does not include the IP you want, blah blah blah. Um, yeah. Choose a local user that will hold your open, your OVPN configurations. Uh, yeah, well, we have exactly one. Uh, since the server will have at least one port open to the internet, it is recommended you enable the unintended upgrades. This feature will check daily for security updates. Uh, we'll apply them when necessary. It will not automatically reboot the server, so to fully apply some updates, you should periodically reboot. Okay. Yes, I want to do that. Now this is doing its thing again. Okay, choose a protocol, press space to select. Please only choose TCP if you know why you need TCP, yeah. So this is essentially now for the VPN connection itself, I think. Um, so using UDP, so UDP essentially just means it sends everything and doesn't check whether or not everything was successful. Um, I'm going to use UDP for now, which might result in some lost packages on the way, but I don't think this will be an issue. Um, you can modify the default OpenVPN port and then you value it and enter. Um, yeah, I am going to actually choose... No, I'm just going to use the default actually. Uh, yeah, 
OpenVPN 2.4 brings support for strong authentication and key exchange using uh, blah blah blah. If your client do not run, uh, enable these blah blah. Note, a current mobile app that is OpenVPN Connect is support. Okay, so I'm using that, so I guess we can just say yes. Choose your desired level of encryption. Press space to select. This is an encryption key that will be generated on your system. The larger the key, the more time this will take. For most applications, it's recommended to use 256. You can increase the number if you care about it. Uh, yeah, so we are just going to use 256-bit encryption. This is already, um, yeah, well, really strong. So that will be fine. Okay, let's see. Will clients use a public IP or DNS name? Uh, they will actually use the DNS I think, yeah, we might want to choose that one. I think, yeah, it is uh, to which IP addresses will bind probably. So let's just take this one. Okay. What is the public DNS name of the server? Now you are asking the complicated question. So uh, let's just uh, get the thing here. I'm also going to blur this one out, obviously. Yes, this is correct. Okay. Select the DNS provider for your VPN clients. Press space to select to use your own select custom. Uh, we are going to use custom, I think. Enter your desired upstream DNS providers. Um, for example, yeah. Okay, we are going to just use uh, Cloudflare, oh, which is this one. Yep, is correct. Or at least I hope it's correct. Now add pi VPN add to create the O VPN profiles. Okay, it is strongly recommended to reboot. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, let's reboot. Okay, and all right. So now the thing is back online again. So we can log into the thing again. All right, now let's run pi VPN add here enter a name for the client. So this is going to be uh, just like Raspberry and the password for the client. Okay, so now we're getting into the real questions here. So let me get out my password manager again. Okay, now we have a password right here. Entering that again. Okay. Done. Okay. So now that uh, was pretty much hopefully everything. Uh, now, the interesting question is if this all actually also works. Okay, um, so let me actually get on my phone now. Okay, so now you should also be able to see my phone. We are just going to search for the open VPN client here real quick. There she is. Um, yeah, let's just install it real quick. Okay. Most trusted VPN on the market. Yeah, great. Um, fast and secure connection. Okay. Now let's open this thing. Uh, connect to VPN cloud access server, connect to VPN. Uh, oh, I can actually also use the uh, OVPN file that the Raspberry Pi gave us. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, I agree. Using iTunes Sync. Oh, that uh, that sounds uh, great. So let me just hook up my phone to my computer here real quick. So now you obviously have to kind of get the, um, the OVPN file off the Pi and onto the phone. All right, now we are here. Um, let's go into... Here, whatever. Um, okay, so where did you save this thing? Into home pi o VPNs. Okay. We are already in home pi, so we are in here. Okay, this is not a file. We can uh, download this here real quick. Okay. Now what we have to do? We have to go into iTunes. Okay. Oh boy, I game <laughs> I will have to uh, definitely blur out so much stuff here. 
Uh, we can go into here. Oh, PNVPN. We can add a file here. We can go on to wherever we save this thing. Okay. Oh, and it already popped up on the phone. Add profile. We are uh, going to name that safe private key password. Uh, um, let's see. Oh, a new subscriber. Nice. Um, let's see if this worked. Uh, title Raspberry, whatever. Add. Let's see. I would like to add a VPN connection. Yeah, sure. iPhone code. Okay. Ah, uh, jeez. Okay. Actually, looked like that worked a little bit at least. Um. Now let's see here. Now everything is going to get interesting because now we are going to try and connect to the VPN as well. I don't have the VPN toggle here anywhere. Um. Yeah, we can already see that in here. That didn't look all too promising. To enable VPN connection, yes. Uh, ooh, let's see. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, we definitely forgot to do still a thing, and that is to also do the port forwarding that we will have to do. All right, we don't have any uh, port forwarding right now, so we are just going to add one here real quick. We are going to, oh god. Uh, yeah, add that manually. I mean, there are like a bazillion devices in there. I just blurted it all out, hopefully, but there are like at least a hundred devices in there. And I can't say that there are definitely, well, there's actually only one Raspberry Pi in there, but oh well. Uh, IPv6, we are not going to do anything about that. Uh, we are not going to expose it completely. We only want to have one uh, port. Uh, something else. Um, we are going to take a VPN here. Uh, yeah, we set up UDP, so we are going to use UDP here. Um, okay, and then we can take a look as so we have the port uh, 1194. 1194 to 1194, yeah. Uh, yeah, you need to be a little bit careful about all of this because then uh, my Raspberry Pi is now always exposed to the internet essentially, uh, or at least only that one port. Um, yeah, but that shouldn't be a problem. What? The IP address is uh, used by a device. What the hell? Yeah, I mean, I said custom and everything, sure, but oh, come on, let's just edit a Raspberry Pi here. That actually takes everything. Uh, yeah, let's just try this again. Um, UDP and 1194 without the queue, please. That is not a valid number. Oops. Uh, over IP version 4 only. Okay. Let's go. Please work. Yeah, that looked like that worked. Did it? Please. Please. Please work. Oh yeah, that definitely worked. Um, now let's just retry on my phone here real quick. And that looked like that worked actually. Okay, so now I am actually connected via LTE, as you can see, but also VPN. So now what I can try is I can just try and maybe like do a remote connection here real quick over mobile internet data. So I could theoretically now remote into my servers from everywhere. If that works, obviously. Yeah, that always takes a little while. Okay, that um, uh, was unfortunate. Let's well, so try a different one, but I don't think this will work actually. Uh, yeah, I think that right here looks like success, doesn't it? Um, so I am now connected through, as you can not see. Um, but I'm connected uh, via LTE here and VPN, and I am clearly on 
the uh, server that I want to be on. So I can, for, for instance, uh, look at my Hyperview manager right here. Oh uh, yeah. So now the thing that didn't work out, um, or why this doesn't work, or didn't want to work originally. Um, I actually did some more troubleshooting. I tried to connect my iPad as well because I thought, hey, maybe like the Microsoft Remote Desktop app is just shitting itself because, well, it's LTE and not Wi-Fi or whatever. Um, yeah, did some basic other steps, looked into event viewer, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it all looked like, I mean, yeah, I, as I already said, uh, Wireshark wasn't able to detect anything common from the Pi um, when I tried to build up the remote connection. So... Yeah, because I'm trying to connect uh, here with a DNS name. Let's actually just uh, see here. Uh, Hyper-V01 is a DNS name. And basically it cannot resolve that. So it has a problem with uh, resolving uh, DNS names for whatever reason. I don't know why. Probably I have to look a little bit more into that. But well, now I just have used the uh, local IP address of the server and and that seemed to work, so now I just have to like add all the servers with IAP addresses and hopefully make them all static, but they should be always static, so yeah, so uh, did work, success, um, uh, I will call it a success, yeah. So, but before we close off here now, I just want to talk a bit about the speed uh, shortly here, so I did some speed tests, um, so here you can see how the uh, my just normal speed test via LTE only, so without the VPN connected, we're getting about 42 megabits per second download and 8.32 megabits per second on the upload. Now with the VPN, we are staying at about 12 megabits per second for both. Um, yeah, and uh, connected directly to the Wi-Fi, we have an upload of 14.7 megabits per second and a download of 40.8. Um, yeah, makes sense obviously that both of these values are the same for VPN uh, connected obviously because well uh, essentially the traffic flow in this would look like the traffic coming in from the internet and then also going out of the internet again because well we're using the VPN so it kind of makes sense that the, uh, these are the same um, I also did like a control thing with my computer uh, and there I got like 92 megabits per second download and 33.59 megabits per second upload Usually I have like uh, 100 down and 40 up, at least uh, theoretically. Um, so yeah, using the VPN sure is slower, but I mean, these speeds are still uh, kind of fast enough for everything like connecting to my servers. Like that's just totally fine. Okay, just, just so you know. Um, and with that, I can just say, Thank you all guys for watching. If you have any questions about the process or if I explain something not uh, good enough, then always ask me in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer your uh, questions and maybe explain something in a little bit more detail. Uh, maybe, I might, may, uh, maybe I'm going to make like a bit of a more detailed video about this at some point, uh, if you want to, or if there's any uh, thing about that that you want. Just again, in the end, kind of my disclaimer, uh, if you set this up yourself and uh, because you set something up wrong or because you did something a little bit unsecure or if something with OpenVPN security breaks or whatever, uh, yeah, if anyone comes through your VPN connection into your network, uh, it's not my fault, it's your fault because uh, you have to set everything up correctly and yeah, there's always a little bit of danger involved when opening something up to the internet, obviously, so... Just so you know, I'm not liable if anything goes wrong. Okay, and with that, thank you guys for watching. See you all at another factory tutorial or home lab video or actually maybe a coding video at some point in the future. Oh, interesting. So thank you guys for watching. See you all then. Have a great time. Bye-bye.